Here, sin of adultery was specifically mentioned. And I wonder why that was so that they said adultery. I believe the Lord is warning if you cheat on your spouse, you may be in danger of losing your salvation. And people don't even think about it. They cheat on their wives and their husbands every day. And they think it's no big deal. They feel like they're not being satisfied. I can go out and do whatever I want. But God tells us not. He tells us what? That there's a possibility that you can lose your salvation. And there's a lot of Christians out there doing a lot of adultery. And they think, oh, I can do this and I can be forgiven. You may not have his name blotted out from this book. I had to look at the word blot means to what? Rub or wipe out to erase and to get rid of. So Jesus is telling us that what our name is literally uh, be blotted out from this book, just more proof we can possibly lose our salvation with him. Amen. And then verse, like you said, verse six, and, and if they shall what fall away to renew them again to repentance. So if you fall away, to me, you can ask God to forgive you and you can get back into God's grace. Amen. So you don't want to stay out there wondering if you do something wrong, how bad it be or what it is that you came back, cannot come back into the grace of God. But you can. But if you're doing anything, you have to ask God to uh, forgive you for your sins. And as Christians, we thank God for 1 John 1, 9, that we can come to him. Amen. And he hears us and forgives us of all our unrighteousness. Well, good morning again, a G2GCC family and our internet audience. Let's just give God praise. Just just thank him today because today is another full, wonderful day that he's given us. Amen. You know, I love that scripture where it says, beloved, put your name there. He called you beloved. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Amen. And I love it. He did. He sent his word. What? To heal a spirit, soul, and body. It doesn't matter. Amen. Amen. So this morning, uh, before we uh, get started, I just want to say, let it be well with your soul. Amen. Amen. And I thank God, like we said, for this Thanksgiving. I hope everybody ate lots of turkey, dressing, cranberries, and all the other sweets, cake, sweet potato pie, and my favorite is peach cobbler. Amen. So now we're going to digest that and work it off and, and wait for the next time for Christmas. Amen. Amen. So thank you, Father. Amen. Now, before I give the message, we're just going to hear a song from our praise team. Amen. And I'll be back with the word. to be 
Praise team, we thank you for that selection. Praise God. And once again, my name is Minister Juliet Nance. We're going to pray and then we're going to get started in the word. Amen. So if you will, bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today. You are worthy of all our praise. You are our provider, our maker, our protector. Through your goodness, we live and have healthy lives, Father, and I thank you because of that we are able to gather here together and worship you, Father. We praise you for all that you have given us, and we put our trust in you. Open our eyes and our hearts that we may see you more clearly today. We snow, or excuse me, renew our strength and refresh our souls through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you for allowing us to have the opportunity to be in your presence again today. And we'll allow the Holy Spirit to move in and through us today. We thank you for that, Holy Spirit. And as I decrease, the Holy Spirit increase to me, increase in me that the word can go forth the way God would have it to go forth. And we thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. May grace mercy and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior be upon you, G2GC family and our internet family and guests. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We just thank God for another wonderful day to be alive among the living. Amen. And as we said, we have been teaching still on the theme, once saved, always saved. So the title of my message today is going to be, Can a Christian Walk Away? 
from their salvation. This is my part two. Can a Christian walk away from their salvation? Now, my financial, my foundation scriptures is going to be, again, John 10, 28 through 30. John 10, 28 through 30. And then Romans 8, 35 to 39. Now, as you go in there, I'm going to give you my purpose. It's the same as last week. That is to explore, can a Christian lose their salvation or is a person who received Jesus Christ eternally? And then also my goal is to help the hearer and the believer to see in Scripture that tells the whole truth about once saved, always save. That's such an interesting topic that can be discussed all day long. Amen. Now I'm going to accomplish uh, this teaching this week is by I'm going to do a short review from last week and then I'm going to do uh, my one point for this week, a summary and a review. Now last week in my review, the title of my message was, Is It a Biblical Truth? Once Saved, Always Saved. And my main point in that last week was teaching, I taught on some primary scriptures, teaching the security of believers being once saved, always saved. And like I said, we're going to hear that phrase a lot, once saved, always saved. Now on the subject, once saved, always saved, it may trouble many people that a person can lose their salvation. And the Bible tells us Christ, what, paid for all of our sins, present, past, future, and otherwise we would not be redeemed. Let's go to John 10, 28, 30. John 10, 28, 30. I get this. Are we there yet? Okay, John 10, 28 through 30. It says, And I gave unto them eternal life, and they should never perish them out of my hand. And my Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is what able to pluck them out of my what Father's hand. And I am my Father, are one. And also, uh, the scripture is tell us as solid as we can get it. Amen. It tells us God's going to what? Give them them eternal life, and they should not perish and will be in his hands. Amen. And he says, God and I are one. Now, John 3.16 says, what? For God so loved the world that he what? He gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever... Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the key is believing. Amen. Believing in who Jesus is. Now, every scripture that calls our salvation eternal or everlasting is making the claim that salvation is forever and what cannot be undone. That internal security happens the moment we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And like I said, if you have any, like when you're reading the word, have questions in your own mind, you may ask certain questions. Like I said, last week I said, what if we commit a sin? That I always wonder what happens. Because sometimes you see things happen and nothing really happens to the person that's committing the sin. Amen. Seem like it go on and on and do things. And they look like this, you know, that it's okay that they're doing it. Amen. And I said, what if they commit a lot of sin, you know, doing everything wrong, you know, and you know it and nothing's happening in their life. Seems like they're continually getting things done, getting things, buying houses, buying cars, going on vacations, just like they're living the life, you know. And then I said, what if we do something very, very wrong? So we have to look at that where we have to only judge our own life and what the word said. So we're going to judge our life on what the scriptures tell us to do and how to live our life. So the things that is possible is that we can lose our salvation. 
Now, the doctrine of eternal security often summarized as what? Once save, always save. Now, if you would go with me to Romans 8, 33 through 34. Romans 8. Romans 8, 33, 34. I tell you, this word is so rich you can get in it and stay there. Romans 8, 33, 34. Are we there? Say amen. amen. It says, verse 33 says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Is it God that justifies? 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yet rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also what make intercessions for us. So we know Christ what died for us. We know that he's at the right hand of the Father. And Jesus is what making intercessions for Christ as our advocate. So we know that he's what both an advocate and a judge as our, and not only as our Savior. Amen. And then we also looked at last week that when we are what born again, we are what regenerated. Regenerate means one formed or created again, spiritually reborn or converted. Formed, created again, spiritually reformed or converted. Now, as we read in John 3 3, it says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, What, except a man be born again, he cannot see what? The kingdom of God. And then we go down to Titus 3, 5. Titus 3, 5 says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he what? He saved us by the washing of regeneration, and renewing of Holy Ghost. So for a Christian to lose his salvation, we have to do unregenerate. And also we saw that Scripture does not actually teach what once saved, always saved. Let's go to Hebrews 6, and I'm going to read verses 4 through 6. Hebrews 6, 4 through 6. Get there as well. Get this a little closer. Hebrews 4, 6. I'm sorry, Hebrews 6, 4. And the verse says, it says, For it is, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted what of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of Holy Ghost. And 5 says, And I have tasted the good word and of God and the powers of the world to come. And if they shall fall away to renew them again unto what repentance, sin that crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So we said that salvation is what both received Main and maintained by faith in Jesus Christ. And we cannot send our salvation away, but like I said, we can renounce it. So it's not something that you just lose, but you can deliberately, openly reject it. Amen? So that's something that you do. Now, uh, that's my review from last week. So now I'm going to get into my new information for this week. Now, if you would, just turn with me to Romans. We are already in Romans. Let's go to verse 8. Chapter 8, excuse me. Chapter 8. Now, my main point for this new session, my point one is, is it possible to lose your salvation? That's a hmm. Is it possible for you to lose your salvation? We're going to see what the Word said. Amen. Now, the argument about whether a Christian can lose his salvation still is what an ongoing debate. People can debate this ongoing. 
Some people refuse to understand it, accept it, that it could be a biblical truth, that a saved Christian can lose his or her salvation. So now I just kind of like want to just look at some scriptures to prove a Christian can lose their salvation. Amen. So uh, Romans 8, 35 through 39, we're going to read. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong scripture, no wonder. Romans 8:35-33. I'm going to start back up at verse 33. It says, "Who shall lay again, I'm sorry, who shall lay anything to the charge of God elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also make intercessions for us. Verse 35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations, or distress, persecution, phantom, or nakedness, or perilous, or sword? Verse 36 says, as it is written, for thy sake we are all killed all the day long, and we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors to conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, verse 39, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us what from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So it shows here that it is possible for someone to turn their backs on Christ. We can. In these last days, according to the Bible, we some someone turns their back Christ on Christ and they will uh, face the fact that they could spend their life in hell. Amen. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to spend eternity in hell. Not at all. I think about um, that books are talked about the divine revelations of hell. And they talk about all the scenarios, how people got to hell and how they had to suffer. And I, when I read that book, I said, oh, no, I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that I'm doing everything that God told me to do because, I mean, they had everybody in there that was doing something wrong, that some kind of way they were really slapped back down by the demons or their face was burning on one side and they were trying to live on the other side. And I said, oh, no. And then they were just crawling and crying and screaming and like that movie that we saw that time the pastor shows, you know, no, we don't want to see that. I don't care what hell looks like because I don't want to try to get there. Amen. I just want to look at it and see what the streets of gold is going to look like when the new Jerusalem come down and we all going to be on this new earth. Amen. Amen. Serving God because that's all I want to look at. So I tell everybody, you know, ask yourself, is it possible that you can lose your salvation? The answer is yes. Salvation can be lost. In other words, a righteous person can die spiritually. They can. Through the Bible, it's clear salvation can be lost rather than ignored or rejected or overwhelming overwhelming, overwhelming evidence. We need to embrace it. That is possible that we can. So it's not something, even though a lot of people don't want to accept the fact that they can lose their salvation, but we still have to give them the truth of the word. Amen. No matter what, because it's all of what we do with the word and how we make the word work for us. Amen. So if you would turn with me to Matthew 6, 15. And while you're turning, I'm just going to take a little water break here for a minute. Matthew 6, 15. Are we there yet? Amen, amen. Matthew 6, 15 says, For if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither would what your father forgive you of your trespasses. So that tells me there that 
a person uh, will not, I mean, God will not let a person get into heaven if he has what? Unforgiveness in his heart. So if you have any uh, thing against anyone, I just advise you go to that person. Let that person know. Even They may not even forgot about anything that went on, but to make sure that your heart is right with God, go with that person ask them to ask for your forgiveness. Amen. If you have did anything or said anything to that person, because you want to make sure that without a doubt, you're going to get to heaven. Amen. And also, since we're still in Matthew, uh, let's go to chapter 12. And I'm going to read two verses there. Matthew 12. And I'm going to start at verse 31. Thirty-one says, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against what? Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Verse 32 says, And whosoever speaketh a word against what? The Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speak against Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither what in this world and neither in the world to come. So we don't want to go against the Holy Spirit. And God didn't send the Holy Spirit down there for nothing. He sent the Holy Spirit down there to what? To be our helper, our comforter. He teaches us things. He brings things to our remembrance. So if you're having, you know, want to know something, just say, okay, Holy Spirit, show me what I need to do. Show me where I can find this. Amen. Along with our angels that are out there working for us, you got to, you can't, you can't nothing but win. Amen. Because they, they, they're here working for us, in us, through us. So I thank God every day. I say, good morning, Holy Spirit. You're my bestest friend and I need you today because I can't do it by myself today. Amen. And I had, um, you know, we hear people talk about praying and talking to God and people say, well, how are you talking to God? That's through his word. You give him his word. You speak the word to him and that's praying to him. And I tell people, pray every day because my granddaughter asked me, she says, Grandma, what do you mean pray every day? Uh, sometimes I don't have time to pray. I said, you don't have to write prayers that are so long that you can't pray to God. They can be short prayers. Father, thank you for helping me get through this day. Father, I thank you for my healing. You know, they just be little things that you need to pray God for and thank you for. But whatever you're needing, it don't have to be to the point where you're afraid to pray because you feel like you're praying too much or you're saying too much. You know, because I know everybody got biz, busy lives. Our young kids got children. They're trying to go to school. They're trying to go to work. So, yeah, they want to still stay in the grace of God and make sure God is covering them. So I tell them, pray every day. Get up. Make sure you take five or ten minutes and pray, thanking God for this day. Pray God for whatever you need. And that's why I like to journal. You know, I know uh, assistant pastor, uh, uh, Marcus Smith liked to journal and other people I find in here like to journal and I like to journal. It just helps me stay focused. And when I journal, I want to make sure that when I pray, God is answering my prayers. And the only way that something I'm going to know that is if I prayed something a year ago and it still haven't come to pass and now it's come to pass and I'm going to look at my journal. So, oh yeah, that's check off. God's took care of that. Amen. So I just, I just tell everybody, get a journal, journal your life, and then you can talk to God while you're journaling, you know, because you're going to express what you're thinking about that day, and it really helps out a lot. I know it helps me because sometimes God gives you things, but you don't want to discuss it with everybody yet until he tells you to, you know. So I keep looking at my journal. I say, okay, God, this is what you want me to do at this time because we all have a purpose for everything that he has for us to do it in a time. And amen, no matter whatever it is, whatever. And never, never stop dreaming. I don't care how old you get, how young you are, still dream and, and, and ask God for things that you desire. We all should have desires and want to do things and have things. Never get to the point where you're not desiring anything. You want to make sure that you're living the life that God wants you. That's to the fullest, you know. So if you're like my age, my latter years is far greater than my former. And I look at my younger kids. They're trying to come up to the point where I'm at at this point. 
And you need to dream. You need to have goals because if not, you won't try to strive for anything. Amen. And the first thing is you always seek God for what he wants for your life. The purpose and plan for that he has for you. Amen. So never, never take time out to ask him because we can get stagnant. We can get to the point that we are so satisfied where we're at in Christ Jesus that we won't try to go beyond or go out of the box. We want to stay in that same box because why? We were, we're comfortable in that box. You know what I'm saying? But step out in the zone. Step out. Do things that you never did before. You know, if you only prayed 10 minutes, now kick it up to 20 minutes. You know, if you got up at 4, I mean, if you get up at uh, 6 and you have to be at work at 7, try to get up at 5.30. You know, test yourself. Do things. Because once you start testing and doing things different, Things have changed. You see it in your health. You see it in your life. Amen. And that's what prayer does. What? Change our lives. Amen. So I see. And then also in the scripture, it talks about anyone who speaks a word against the son of man will be forgiven. But like you said, anyone who speaks against Holy Spirit will not be forgiven either in this age or the age to come. Now, like we already read in Hebrews six, four through eight, but I kind of just like to sit there for a minute. Let's go back there. Hebrews six, four through eight. And because um, in verse four, at the very beginning, it says for it, what it is impossible for those who were what once enlightened and have tasted the what the heavenly gift and what were made what partakers of Holy Ghost. And then verse 5 tells us, and we have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world, what, to come. And then we see in verse 6, it says, what, if we shall, what, fall away to renew them again unto what, repentance, sin, they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put them, what, to an open shame. So, and then we see in verse 7, it says, for the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh off it upon it, and bringeth what forth herbs meet for them, they whom it's dressed receive blessings from God. And verse says, For that which beareth thorns and bears is rejected, and is nigh and unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. So when I read that, I believe that these scriptures are pointing out several key phrases showing that it might be possible for a Christian to lose their salvation with the Lord. Because like it says in verse 4, those who were enlightened, this describes a what? A saved, a born-again Christian. And they that have tasted the heavenly language and become a partaker of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God, I believe we can not be partakers of Holy Spirit unless we are what? Born again or saved. Amen. Now, non-believers do not have Holy Spirit living on the inside of them. And only Christians can truly taste the good word of God. And the Bible has to be what? Spiritually what? Discerned. And this is done by through what? Holy Spirit teaching us. Amen. And then like verse 4 says, it, for it is what? Impossible to understand the word of God if you're not filled with Holy Spirit, if you're not born again. Amen. And then verse, like you said, verse 6, and, and if they shall what? Fall away to renew them again to repentance. So if you fall away, to me, you can ask God to forgive you and you can get back into God's grace. Amen. So you don't want to stay out there wondering if you do something wrong, how bad it be or what it is that you came back, cannot come back into the grace of God. But you can. But if you're doing anything, you have to ask God to uh, forgive you for your sins. And as Christians, we thank God for 1 John 1, 9, that we can come to him. Amen. And he hears us and forgives us of all our unrighteousness. Now, uh, the key phrase here is in verse 6 is if, what is it? If, that word, if they fall away, what do we need to do and consider falling away as? One thing, 
God the Father will be the final judge on what is considered falling away from him. So only he knows at that day who will enter into the kingdom of God. We can't judge it. It's for God to judge it. Amen. But we know that we have to ask for forgiveness because he says, if you have unforgiveness in your heart, you won't see the kingdom of God. Amen. So now I kind of want to talk about sinning willfully after we have already received the knowledge of the truth of God, sinning willfully. Let's turn to Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. It's a lot in here. I'll tell you, it's a lot that we can learn about once save, always save. Amen. So that's why I encourage anybody, do a, do a study for yourself. Amen. And allow God to give you the true revelation that it is possible that we can lose our salvation. Amen. But it's something that we have to do. We renounce it our own selves. Hebrews 10, I'm going to read verse 26. It says, for if we, excuse me, for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains what? No more sacrifices of sin. So there it is again. Notice it says, if we sin willfully and have already received the knowledge of the truth. I believe this is wording is talking about Christians, not non-Christians, but Christians. Amen. So also in this verse, it says there uh, no longer remains a sacrifice for sins is implying that a definite loss of salvation. If someone what pushes away from God, the father, we don't want to push away from God, the father. We need to embrace ourselves around him. Amen. We need to love on him because we want him to love us back. Amen. So we have to look at scriptures that may imply we can lose our salvation. So what are some of the specific sins that could cause us to lose our salvation? So let's kind of go over uh, Galatians 5. Galatians 5. So it is. We see in here, amen, that is a possibility. We can lose our salvation, amen. So that's why I said we always have to make sure that we're doing everything that God has called us to do. That's why we always have to be before him every day because there's so much distractions out there that keeps us can keep us off focus. Amen. Because if we let the world, I mean, the, the cares of the world, they will keep us off focus every time. And then we often it make you wonder is truly if God is real. You know, and we don't want that to happen. Amen. Because we know he's real. Amen. When you breathe and get up in the morning, you know he's real because he'll allow you another day. When you walk outside and breathe that breath of air and you have warmth in the sun, uh, winter and cooling in the summer, he's real. You know, he gives us the light to see at, at nighttime and the daytime to see the sun. I mean, so we know he's real because of all the, the good things that he gives us every day. Amen. So God is what? No greater God than he. And then I thank uh, Miss Pam for that selection. God is. He's everything that we need. I think in the uh, Old Testament it says he's the God of what? I am. And when he says I am, that means He's he has whatever I need and I have whatever he needs. And what he needs for me is just praise him, love him, and then he's going to give me what I need when I ask. Amen. Okay. I need to get there. Galatians 5. We there yet? Verse, I'm going to start at verse 19. It says, Now the works of the flesh are what? Manifested, which are these, what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, what? Wrath, strife, ooh, strife is a big word, seditions, Heresies, verse 21 says, envies, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like of which I tell you before, as I also told you in times past, that they which, what, do such things shall, what, 
shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It is where he's telling us, if you do these things, we can what? Not inherit the kingdom of God. So that says you may not be able to get to heaven. You could lose your salvation. Now notice here, sin of adultery was specifically mentioned. And I wonder why that was so that they said adultery. I believe the Lord is warning, if you cheat on your spouse, you may be in danger of losing your salvation. And people don't even think about it. They cheat on their wives and their husbands every day, and they think it's no big deal. They feel like they're not being satisfied. I can go out and do whatever I want. But God tells us not. He tells us what? That there's a possibility that you can lose your salvation. And there's a lot of Christians out there doing a lot of adultery. And they think, oh, I can do this and I can be forgiven. You may not. You mean? Because God tells us. So I believe God is saying, if you cannot, what, stay faithful and loyal to your spouse, then maybe you will not be stay faithful and loyal to him. Amen. Amen. So now just look at what happened to Satan in one third of all what the angels. They could not stay faithful and loyal to the Lord. As a result, he tried to what? Rebel against the Lord. And eventually they were what? Thrown right out of heaven. Now we can see that in Isaiah 14 uh, verses uh, 12 to 16 where it talks about where he was, all his angels were kicked out of heaven. And then Revelation 12, 19. Let's go to Revelation 12, 19. We got time. But I don't want him to kick me out. I want to stay. I want to be up there with Peter and John and all the good folks up there. Amen. Amen. So something to think about, family. Something to think about. We have to really look at our lives seriously. Amen. This Christian walk is not a plain thing, but it's not hard to do. Amen. God didn't make it hard for us, but he said we can do that. Did I do the right scripture? Yeah, Revelation 12, 19. Nope, it's not a 19. Uh, maybe I'll put that down one. Let me see. Let me look here for a minute. Uh, Gina, voice. Uh, Okay, first, verse 9, excuse me, uh, verse uh, 12, 9, it says, And the great dragons were what cast out that the old servant called the devil and the Satan, which deceived what? The whole world. He was what? He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Amen? So God tells us that, you know, when you rebel, things happen. Amen? And you will. You know, sometimes people think they don't see what happens when they sin, but you do. You may not want to recognize it, but things happen whether you see it through your family, through your kids. But when you sin, there are repercussions behind it. Amen. So don't think you're getting away with anything. That's why you have to teach your children as they're growing up when they do things, whether, you know, sometimes when your kids are little and you take them to the store and you tell them now, don't ask me for anything. I'm not going to buy you anything or whatever. But then they'll, they see something that they want. They'll just put it in their hands and think they can just walk out of the store with it because they figure, oh, my mom and dad are already paying for this stuff so I can go ahead and take it. And I saw this at Target, and I really loved how the parents, you know, the, told the child that they couldn't have it, but the little child was determined that she was going to take it. So the father had to stop there, held the line up. He said, I told you that you could not have this and you're not going to walk out of here with it because that's stealing. And you can go to jail for it. And the little girl looked up at him like, I can't go to jail. He said, yes, you can. You can go to jail. They can take you. And do he, he did her like he said, he can put your hands like this and take you, put you in that car. So she gradually gave the thing back to her daddy. 
and sit here, you know. So you have to tell them why they're doing things because if you don't stop and tell them why they're young and people think that's cute, oh, you know, no, they know the difference. So that's what I said, don't teach them to lie for you. Don't teach them that they can just walk out of the store because we do, we, I, I tested that, I had to repent. Because when people knock at the door or call, say, I'm not here. No, I'm here. You know, and the kids say, my mama say, I'm not here. And I was like, oh, man, you know, because they don't know the difference, but I do, you know. And I said, oh, man. So I stopped doing that. So I just answered the door. You know what I'm saying? And telling myself I'm not available. I don't want what you have or whatever's going on. Amen. So they won't. Because it is. We think those things are just something to laugh about. And what I hate most is like. People say curse words, the babies pick it up, and then they repeat it. Oh, they think that's so cute and funny. No, it's not. Not at all. And I hate when parents say, you know, let them do Oh, he'll get over it. No, he's not. As you get older, the words going to get worse and worse. He's going to be cussing out everybody, the teachers, anybody that will show no respect and show no respect for themselves. Amen. So we do not want to teach our kids to do things. And I hate when they say, don't do as I do, but do what I tell you to do. No, we got to be the example. Amen. The example at all times. But it's funny how they, how we sometimes can do little things and our kids are going to pick it up. And you wonder, well, where they get that from? From you. You know, we the imitators. So we always, they all, they always looking to see what you're going to do. So we have to be careful what we do, amen, and how we respond, and then how we holler and scream at people, you know, because then you holler and scream at, you know, you know you're old, the bill collector, and they call your house, and you're going to holler at them, and your kids see you hollering at them, and then they go holler at the kids or their brother and sister because they see you hollering. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. So we always have to check ourselves. You know, we always want to live in the peace of God. That's what he said. God is our peace. Amen. And the joy of the Lord is what? My strength. Amen. Amen. So as you see, there's no doubt in Galatians 5, 19 to 21, he's talking about, he's talking to the non-believers and Christians. And we only know who, we will only know who make it into heaven when we get there ourselves. So like I said, are we heading to heaven? That's where we good. That should be your goal getting into heaven. Amen. And we ain't worried about what's going on in hell. Like they say, hell enlarges itself every day. It ain't going to enlarge with me and my family because I'm praying for my family, hoping they get on board as well. Amen. So every chance I tell them, are you praying? Are you seeking God to make sure your heart stay right so you can get to, to heaven yourself? Amen. Because you can't get in there with me. You have to get there by yourself. Amen. So I do not want to take any chances with the Lord by sinning on a regular basis. Not at all. Amen. So one thing we know, Jesus' uh, will is that we all would stay out of sin. So once you become saved and, and when you uh, go back out, start sinning again, uh, you're going to what? Against God's will. And he could, and that's a danger, like I said, of losing your salvation. So let's look at some more scriptures talking about your name being blotted out of the book of life. Let's go to Revelation 3, 5. We're still over here, Revelation 3, 5. We always hear about our name in the books of life. Amen. But it says here in Revelation 3, 5. It says, he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot what out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before what my father and before the angels. And that's what we want. This book, it has every single saved and born again believer's name recorded in it because he tells us that. Amen. But Jesus says specifically, says that he who what overcomes will not have his name blotted out from this book. I had to look at the word blot means to what? Rub or wipe out, to erase and to get rid of. So Jesus is telling us that what our name is literally uh, be blotted out from this book just 
more proof we can possibly lose our salvation with him. Amen. So I said, what is this that Jesus wants us to what? Overcome. He definitely wants us to overcome the temptations to fall into some type of sin. He wants us to, to learn how to try to live our life, a holy life. Amen. Uh, now, if you do not overcome and pull out of these temptations within a time span that God has given us, it is possible your name could be blotted out from the book of life from all eternity. So, I mean, God, if you look at it, he gives you time to get your life together. But we don't know how long that time, because we, we don't know when he's coming back. He didn't tell us when he was coming back. He told us to be ready and prepared. Amen. Amen. So how are we going to be that? We're going to either get born again, accept him as our Lord and Savior, and live the Christian life the way he wants us to. Amen. Amen. So it's on us. So the fact is that he is specifically using the words of having your own personal name blotted out from this book of life is showing us this is definitely a possibility that we have gone too far and wallowed too long in our sin. He doesn't want us that. He wants us to overcome any temptations that we may have out there that may tempt us in sinning. Amen. Amen. So we want to always be in his grace my summary. So we all have come to our own conclusions as whether or not you feel a Christian can lose their salvation the way the verse has been given or worded. Amen. I myself believe that all scriptures mean exactly what they're saying. So my recommendation, recommendation to you is that you directly uh, di go directly to God the Father in prayer and ask him to show you what is the real truth on this matter? Once saved, always saved. Amen. Because don't forget, it is a possibility that you can lose your salvation. My review. And like I said, our theme was once saved, always saved. Now, uh, my part two talked about can a Christian walk away from their salvation? And we use uh, the foundation scriptures, Romans 8, 33 through 39. In John 10, 28 through 30. And um, my point one was, is it possible to lose your salvation? My question is, yes. We saw in Matthew 6, 15, God will not let a person into heaven who is, has un unforgiveness in their heart or sin that they need to be forgiven of. Amen. Amen. Matthew 12, 32, 31 and 32, it says, Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but, but anyone who speaks against Holy Spirit but what, will not be forgiven. And then we looked at Hebrews 6, verse 4 through 8. It says, show several key phrases showing that it might be possible for a Christian to lose their salvation with the Lord. And then we looked at Hebrews 10, 26, and it talked about what? sinning willfully after we have already received the knowledge and the truth of God. And then also we looked at scriptures that may imply we can lose our salvation. So I encourage you to take those scriptures, look them up yourself. And, and like uh, Elder Johnson said, there's many, many more out there that you can look at yourself and get the revelation that you can lose your salvation. Amen. And then we looked at uh, Galatians 5, verses 19 through 31, where it talks about the works of the flesh. No doubt, Galatians 5, 19 through 21, is talking about non-believers and Christians as well. So we will only know who makes it into heaven is when we get there. So I want to see all my family, all my friends. I want to see everyone. We want to see heaven enlarged and not hell enlarged. Amen. Amen. So I'm sure you like me. We do not want to take no chances in, 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 in losing that by sinning on a regular basis. Amen. Amen. So I just want to thank you for your time. Let's just give God praise and glory. My time is up. Amen. Amen. God is a wonderful God. So like I said, we don't want to leave our service with not allowing anyone that has not had an opportunity to acknowledge and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. 
Now, Romans 10, 9 and 10 definitely is a scripture that you should read because it actually shows us what you need to do to get born again. Verses 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God is raising from the dead, thou what shall be saved. And then Romans verse 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if you would, if you had not had a t uh, had an opportunity to acknowledge and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please uh, repeat this prayer after me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Your word says, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. So I know you won't cast me out, but you take me in. And I thank you for it. You said in your word, if I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. I'm confessing with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus is the Son of God and he was raised from the dead for my justification and I receive him right now as my Lord and Savior. And also you said in your word, if I uh, ask for the Holy Spirit, you were giving to me. I'm asking you now to fill me with Holy Spirit and I will speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives me utterance. Thank you, Father, for saving me and filling me with Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. Now, if you said that prayer in your heart and you believe it, now you are born again. You're a child of God. You're a member of the family of God, and you are a Christian. So we'd like to hear from you uh, in this process of here, uh, doing a uh, prayer that you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and also being in filled with baptism of the Holy Spirit. And at the bottom of our screen, you'll see a number that you can call us. We would love to hear from you. That number is 314-867-1894. And uh, just call it, and we'll be glad to answer any questions or concerns that you may have. Amen. Now I'd like to give you a benediction before we leave. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, what that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do his will, working in us that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Have a blessed, wonderful life. Jesus love you, and so do I. Amen.